I promise you, I would do a video about this. My chosen home defense round. 12 gauge slug. Slug. Um, yeah, that's very controversial. And if you're not into guns, you probably don't really know what I mean. But if you are in the gun scene, own some guns, talk about guns, uh, you'll know that that is definitely not popular. And I'm going to explain a little bit about why I choose that round. Um, I will tell you right off the bat that uh, I do not feel this is a superior round to anything else. I do not feel it is the uh, very best option. Um, I do not feel that um, if you choose something different that you're wrong. Nothing like that. This is purely my choice. That's all it is. It's my preference. There is no way I could be wrong about choosing this because it is my preference. Just like if you choose something else, there's no way you're wrong for choosing that. So let's clear it out right off the bat. It's just my preference. I'm going to go through some different factors and, and uh, some different theories and, and just talk about home defense in general with shotguns, okay? Now, let's start off by talking about home defense guns in general. Um, a lot of people have home defense guns. I think when people choose home defense guns, it's usually one of two things. Either it's a shotgun of some sort or uh, it's a pistol of some kind. I think it's rare, although people do it, it's more rare to see someone have a rifle um, for home defense, okay? That's usually in the case where they just do not have any other options. And, you know, maybe they only own one firearm and it is a rifle, so that's what they choose to use. Most people don't, um, for various reasons. Okay, when you're talking about home defense, a lot of times penetration comes up, and that's something I'm gonna focus on a little bit more in this video than anything else. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But yeah, we have a lot of handguns, okay? As far as handguns, all kinds. Um, I think what's, uh, what's very common, the, the top three, I call them, it's nine millimeter, 40 Smith & Wesson, and 45 ACP, the most common three calibers for pistols these days, okay? And I am talking about semi-automatic handguns. Yes, you also have 38 Special and uh, 357 Magnum, okay? If you are a revolver guy, more than likely you stick with 357, and that's what you keep in your revolver for home defense. Awesome, very good effective rounds. Uh, but I'm focusing more on uh, semi-automatics for the discussion purposes here. So yeah, and then, then we talk about shotguns. Now there's all different kinds of shotguns, different ways they shoot, different mechanisms, different calibers. Um, definitely by far unquestionable, the most common shotgun gauge is going to be 12 gauge. 12 gauge, it's one of the bigger gauges. It's very effective. It's very, very common. There's, there's hundreds of different types of ammunition for a 12 gauge shotgun. Now it doesn't matter if your shotgun's automatic. Um, it doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, there's, there's lever action shotguns out there, pump action, that's irrelevant for the conversation. We're talking specifically about the ammo choice and maybe why or why not you do decide to choose that. Now, I think if we're talking about um, shotguns here, there's uh, two common loads that people use. And when I say loads, I mean type of round, okay? Double lock buck is probably by far the most popular or most used or common for home defense. Uh, in addition to that, a lot of people like different size shots. And what I mean by that, like number six shot, number seven shot, they're all different types of like bird loads. They have smaller pellets in them. Uh, the smaller the pellet, the more you have. But um, double up buck is definitely by far the most popular. Now, some people do use slugs. Now, some people load their, their shotgun with one type of ammunition, and that's it. They just load the whole thing up with that same ammo. That's what I do. I have five slugs in my shotgun, okay? Uh, other people, a common practice is to stagger types of rounds or stack certain types of rounds, and it's for a very specific reason. What a lot of people will do is they will have their very first round that they fire out of that, that gun, um, it will be bird shot or some kind of smaller shot, okay? It will be followed the rest of the rounds will most likely be double up buckshot, okay? This is a very common practice people do. And the theory behind this is that that first shot is somewhat of a warning shot. Hey, you broke into my house or you went on my property, whatever, I'm pointing a gun at you, you don't stop, so I shoot you. Now, I'm not trying to kill you, I'm trying to stop you, okay? Because that's what the most important thing, people don't realize that defense doesn't mean killing someone. Defense means stopping a threat. That, that's all it means, it doesn't mean you can go around killing people who are, you know, in your home and stuff. All you want to do for most people is stop the threat. Some choose to skip this step 
and forget about warnings. You're in my house. You're going to die now. And that's fine. That's your prerogative if that's how you feel. Um, that's how I feel. <laughs> I feel like if you're in my home and you're not supposed to be in there, I will shoot and kill you and then figure out why you're in there later. I don't ask questions. That's just my preference. Some people, um, whether it's a moral issue or a legal issue, they feel a lot safer by having a lesser lethal round for that first round. Now, birdshot is not lethal. Some people load up their, their uh, shotgun sinking, birdshot's legal, or excuse me, it's all legal, but lethal, okay? I read, this is not my assumption or my guess as to what will happen. I read a specific medical case where someone shot was shot almost point blank range, about five feet. And they were close enough where they had like uh, powder burns on their, their chest around the, uh, you know, the, the wound. They were shot with birdshot, okay, which is hundreds of these little tiny BB sized pellets, little things. And um, it penetrated through the skin, made a, a hor horrific wound really, but didn't penetrate much deeper than that. Most of it, like 85% or something, was stopped by the rib cage, okay? Now, once this went into the skin, a lot of it diverted all different directions, you know? And the, uh, the muscle tissue behind the skin and the bone structure just stopped most of it, okay? Just, that was it. It didn't penetrate much at all. Kind of like getting shot with a BB gun. But there was like a couple of them that had passed through the ribs, like in between ribs, okay? Just because there's so many of them. But they, they didn't penetrate any organs. They stopped. In fact, one bounced off the heart. <laughs> there was a, a dimple uh, on the surface of the, uh, the heart. All right. So it, it's not a, um, it's not a effective lethal cartridge to use or rounds. Okay. Um, some people use it as a deterrent. They don't think it's going to kill someone. They just want to make them, you know, extremely in pain. So they stop so they can react however they want to follow up that reaction. Whether that means shooting them once and then stopping, or maybe they don't stop, so they shoot them again. But that's the first thing I want to make clear, is that birdshot is not a lethal uh, round. This has been proven with people who have been shot with it. It can be. You know, any kind of uh, weapon can be potentially lethal. I mean, a spoon you can shove into someone's neck properly, and that will kill them too. Um, but we don't think of spoons as being lethal. But it's not, it's not as effective, obviously, as other ammunition. So... Um, moving on to different, different types of ammo. I think a lot of people, uh, choose to use double op buck because it's, uh, it's essentially a bunch of nine millimeter rounds. Okay. And, uh, you know, how many inside a uh, double op buck depends on, you know, if it's two or three quarter inch shell, or if you got the three inch shell, some people do prefer those because they do carry, uh, you know, more pellets inside, but essentially they're slower moving, um, pellets or balls but they're the size of nine millimeter rounds, okay? So one shot with a uh, double up buck may be equivalent of you and your friends standing in a group shooting with Glock 19s, you know, or Glock uh, 17s, you know, nine millimeter Glocks all shooting at the same time. So it's very devastating. And there's no question that double up buck is devastating and is extremely effective, okay? But um, then we have the slug, all right? The slug is a massive bullet, just one. It's not a bunch of pellets. It's not a little bunch of little BBs. It's not a few larger balls of lead. It's one huge hunk of metal. Okay. The double, or excuse me, the uh, 12 gauge slug is bigger than any uh, pistol cartridge. Okay. If you, um, again, if you carry a pistol in your home or have a pistol stashed in your home for home defense, um, this beats it. It's bigger. Okay, the gun's also bigger, also has disadvantages, but my one shot with a slug will be more effective if it's in the same place that your one shot of any handgun on the market, even a 50 a &E. This is more devastating than a 50 a &E. um, Now, when you are talking about ballistics, there is differences between the speeds of the rounds. Of course, that affects everything, but this is just as bad as you can get, okay? Just horrific as far as that goes. Now, we're leaving all rifle rounds out of this discussion because that's a non-issue right now because a lot of people don't use rifles for home defense. Now let's talk a little bit about, well that's first of all, that's why I like this. It's basically a massive bullet, just one. I don't need to worry about spread. A lot of people choose double op buck because it spreads out, right? Well, everyone knows the huge myth, rumor, I don't know what you want to call it, um, 
the ridiculous thought that you can point at someone and shoot a shotgun and it just it spreads out like a big net. It doesn't, okay? Double odd buck at about 12 feet spreads out three inches. Okay. That's three inches. I'll get it compared to my hand. That's how much spread you have with, with your little nine millimeter rounds coming out of your double off buck shell. Okay. Yeah, it's bigger than the width of my one round, but it's not like you may think it is. Okay. And 12 feet is a realistic, you know, range. Of course you can be a little bit further than that inside the home, but it's a realistic, you know, CQC situation. Um, so that's not as much as people think. And there, there's this, misdemeanor this this thought that misdemeanor that's not even a good word for that i don't even think that makes any sense does it uh, not even close um there's a uh that's not the word i was looking for uh, misdemeanor what am i talking about i don't know what i'm talking about sometimes there's a misconception that's the one that's the ticket yes there's a common misconception that you know shotgun point shoot and you'll blow anything in its path away completely not the case um, you know, at 12 feet spreading three inches, you still have to have really good aim. Okay. And in my opinion, just my personal opinion, I choose the slug. I'd rather have one bigger bullet than a couple of smaller bullets that are only spreading out that much. You know, um, at best you're looking at maybe, maybe if you're pretty far from someone about a foot spread. All right. I'm not concerned with that. The most, the number one, most important thing that you should know if you own a firearm for defense is how to use that firearm. That's your responsibility. Be good with it. You can't buy a gun, put it in your closet, and then forget about it and hope one day if someone's breaking your house, you can efficiently use that weapon. That is false. You are in a bad situation, okay? You have to go to a range. You have to practice with your firearms. You have to know um, what they're capable of, too. A lot of people don't realize ballistics. They don't understand them. Uh, they, don't un they don't really have a grasp for the reality of what their gun is capable of. Okay, penetration is also something that I learned about about a year ago on different ammunition. It was, it was very uh, eye-opening to me. I didn't realize certain things, you know. I always had um, different ideas in my head. Like, for example, the, the slug. I always thought a slug was kind of like a, a rifle round, like a two two three or something. And if I shot this at a wall, it would go through the wall and through the neighbor's wall. And then, you know, pass that, pop out the other side and keep going and go through a tree. And I'm being sarcastic here now, but I always thought this was this awesome crazy penetrating rounds. It's not. Most 12 gauge slugs penetrate the same or less than a 45 ACP round. They're big. They're heavy. They don't have that momentum. They're traveling at a slower speed than rifle rounds. Okay. Uh, yes, they will penetrate through walls, but guess what? A lot of you guys don't know this. Your double up buckshot will also penetrate through multiple layers of three quarter inch sheet rock. So I know there's guys out there who load up their home defense shotgun with a double op buck in hopes that, well, you know, if I'm spinning around or I don't know what I'm doing, if I'm shooting towards my, my little son's room, my daughter's room, or my bedroom where my wife is, I don't want it to go through the wall. So I use a double op buck. It's, that's, uh, that's still dangerous. And I know you don't realize that, but that is the fact. It does penetrate. Okay. Pretty much <laughs> almost all guns you have for home defense you know, your pistol rounds, your 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 ACP, okay? Most shotgun loads, both slugs and double up buck. Very, very common options for home defense. They all penetrate through sheetrock, okay? They will go right through the insulation, pop out the other side of the sheetrock, you know, if you don't hit a stud or something. Uh, of course, studs will stop, I would say, a lot of different uh, ammunitions, but in the rare chance that you don't hit a stud and, you know, you, uh, you pass through one layer of sheetrock, through the insulation, through the other layer of sheetrock. You happen to not hit any pipes or anything in there. Uh, it will go right through. It's not a problem. It really isn't. Penetration is is overlooked sometimes, and some people don't know all of the, uh, um, the details about it. So this is not no more a worry about penetration than any kind of option that I actually have that's effective, in my opinion. Uh, in addition to that, although it's unnecessary to continue about this in this, in this discussion, I will mention that, hey, I do live in the woods, and the fact that um, it's rare that someone's going to break into my house, period. One in a million, someone's going to break into my house. There's not a lot of crime where I live, okay? Let's say it does happen. I do have that one in a million. Well, let's add another layer of rarity to that. 
there's another layer of, okay, someone breaks in, say, during the day. That's going to be rare. I would assume most break-ins happen at night unless, unless by chance you're just not home and someone you know follows your patterns and they know, okay, well, he's not home during these times. Then they may break in during the day. Um, but the rarity is someone breaks into my house and another rarity that I'm actually in a position in my specific house layout that I'm shooting towards neighbors, which is very unlikely, okay, even more rare, um, let's say that does happen. And I get to a situation where now I spun around and I'm, you know, it's, it's very, it would be very strange that I would be pointing in those directions in my house because of my layout. But let's say I am for some reason and I shoot and it, you know, the possibility that it's going to go through sheetrock, which is very easy to do, not hit a stud, which is kind of a 50-50. There's lots of studs in walls. Let's say it doesn't hit one. Goes through one layer of sheetrock, goes through another layer of sheetrock, goes through the siding. Now it's outside, okay? There's, there's a very small possibility, but still it's there. Now, a lot of people forget it has to pass through a section of woods. It has to miss all of those trees. Um, and no house is is you know, as close as, well, let's see, the closest house for me right now is roughly 60 or 70 feet. And I, it's dense woods, you know? So, um, again, and, and then it would have to miss all the trees and then pass through the siding, you know, into their wall, into their house. Maybe it hits a window, which would be, you know, even more unlikely. It's not going to make it, guys. This slug will not take that journey. I can specifically aim right now at this back wall and there's a house back there. The likelihood that someone will be in this specific room and in that corner and then me shooting them like that, it's rare, but let's say it happens. I can aim right now, take this this round, put in my shotgun, shoot that wall. It will go through, the, I have paneling in my house, by the way, that is another layer of things. Um, paneling is definitely gonna be harder to shoot through than sheetrock. But let's say it does get through all that. It's got to go through some woods before it gets across the street, you know, or, or back uh, by the next house. And it's just, it's not going to happen. It does not have the momentum that you would need to do that. Okay. I would say it would be rare for me to shoot, you know, even like the AK through this wall and still have it, you know, hit my neighbor. But um, it's not a concern for me. Some people don't realize that the uh, penetration is not as much of an issue as you think. Or if you're arguing, and I'm sure it happens all the time, someone will say, well, you know, you should not use a nine millimeter, a nine millimeter round, way too much penetration. That's why I use a 45, but that's why I use buckshot. No, no, no. Um, it really, it's all the same. Uh, you all have the same possibility of going through the wall in accident. The most important part is don't shoot your wall. Try to shoot the person. And how do you do that effectively? You practice with your firearms. Okay. You go out and you practice and you practice and you practice and you get very good at it so that if someone does break in your house, you're being more responsible as the gun owner to use it properly and hit your target. Um, I don't know what else I can really say about it. I mean, it's it's my chosen round. Uh, I'm not wrong by choosing this. I'm not right by choosing this. It's just my preference. Just because you may not choose this, and it's definitely not the popular choice. Double up buck is the most popular choice. Um, I like that. It's a bigger bullet. It's it's devastating. Like I said, it's bigger than a 50 a &E, okay? Uh, and I got five of them in my gun. I don't think I need more than five rounds. Uh, if you need more than five rounds for home defense, either you're in a lot more trouble than you think, and you're really not prepared, um, or you're not good with your gun. And that's a problem too. But anyway, I thought I'd make a video on this, talk about some stuff. I don't think a lot of people realize um, or understand certain ballistics with different rounds and, uh, and how they work and, and penetration really understand it. Um, you know, there's plenty of great websites out there. Box of Truth uh, is a great one. There's a couple of uh, gun forms. Gun forms are just like the knife forms. You got to filter through all the riffraff and the BS, but there's good information out there. You know, if you want to research, if you happen to say have a 40 Smith & Wesson for home defense, look at it. Look at the ballistics of the ammunition that you choose to store in those magazines and really have a better understanding as to what capabilities your gun has, because some people think their guns are more capable than they really are, and vice versa, some people th think their guns are safer than they really are. So it's all about just learning and understanding things. I'm not, I don't know at all. I really don't. Um, there's plenty of you watching this video. I would confidently say at least 100 people 
who are going to watch this video who know who knows way more than I do about ballistics and ammunition and firearms. Um, but from my own research, this is what I've discovered. I don't think this is superior to a uh, double lock buck. I just want a big, huge hole. That's what I want, okay? And I know this will work. And I know if I hit my target like uh, I'm practicing all the time to do, that that will be it. That will drop my threat. And I know if someone comes into my house that the gun will be pointing at them and the trigger will be pulled. Uh, you know, so it's really for a whole separate video, but there's a, there's a mentality, there's a mindset with owning a gun for defense. It's not for everyone. It really is not for everyone. And you may walk around your whole life with a gun and think, yeah, you know, I'm, f you know, I could take care of it. Someone pulls a gun on me, pulls a knife, whatever. I'll pull my gun. I'll shoot him right away. You could think that forever, and then the day finally comes and you freeze up and you just can't do it. There's no way to tell that until that day comes. But I think about it all the time. And uh, um, so sometimes I could be crazy. I can have that crazy mentality that I got nothing to live for. It, if it's me or you, forget it. I'm going to try my best to make sure that I survive and, and you don't. And I'll ask questions later. Um, so anyway, that's just, just my take on it. Like I said, I'm not right. I'm not wrong. It's just an opinion. We all have them. So feel free to share yours. I know some of you will, whether I ask you to or not. Uh, and that's what's cool about YouTube is that we can all talk about whatever we want. So, yeah, that's all. Some people will say I'm dumb for that, and that's okay. I, I just will reply with you don't really understand um, what it is. Like I said, if you have a gun for home defense, you can't complain about being uh, something that's over-penetrating or having a worry because you're completely wrong about that. Understand what you're talking about, and then we'll have a nice adult conversation together. So that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. It's probably a long one. I don't know. I don't have a timer on my webcam. But uh, if you hung in this long, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, as always. And I truly hope you enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Take it easy.